Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, sorry for the delay, I think, uh, but I think we're on time. So uh, we have a wonderful session and a wonderful session which is very uh, relatable and also relevant today in our society that is learning new languages and the uh, experience of Naga. So, uh, Today we have, uh, I will, I will briefly, the program has been played in the events, uh, but then I will briefly read out the program so that we have, we are a little bit familiar with all. And also I would like to, uh, and I also I would like to acknowledge uh, those uh, who have joined for this uh, webinar today. Uh, Uh, from other departments, HODs, faculties, and well-wishers, and also mostly the students. Uh, I, I, I hope and I believe I'm audible. Okay, uh, okay anyway, I will briefly read out the program today. Uh, we have an introductory note by Introductory note by our respected HOD, Dr. Rimei Longmei, Department of Political Science. Then uh, we have participants, for, uh, uh, students participants, Keza Viko Loshe, BA first semester, uh, Rose M. Lota, BA third semester, Dia Lila Imsong, BA first semester, Kalibo, BA first semester, Liga Zimo, BA third semester, and then we have uh, after. After the participants and after the speakers, we have Q&A session, uh, and that will be led by Dr. Ali, Dr. Sabur Ali, Assistant Professor, Department of Political Science, and concluding remarks will be given by Dr. Aniruddha Babur, uh, Assistant Professor, Department of Political Science. So uh, let us uh, let us uh, go ahead with uh, let us. Go ahead with our program. So I would like to give. Uh, I would like to uh, request Dr. Remy to kindly take your time and uh, take your time for the introductory note. Uh, thank you, Professor Ureti uh, Awongsi. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I hope I'm audible. Um, once again, uh, welcome every one of you to this uh, webinar uh, on uh, learning new languages benefit uh, benefits uh, Naga experience uh, organized by the Department of Political Science as part of the Don't Talk webinar series of Tetsu College. Um, first of all, I would like to uh, mention that uh, our college is providing a platform for students and uh, teachers where they can come forward and share uh, their knowledge and piece of research and their findings. So <clears throat> this time it is, um, uh, I'm extremely happy to uh, mention that the Department of Political Science could successfully organize this student webinar uh, on this uh, particular day on learning new language benefits Naga experience. So <clears throat> as part of the introductory notes, I would like to mention that uh, in the context of uh, India, uh, we have a problem of, uh, uh, we have the questions of language and also we have the issue of uh, linguism, you know, uh, we have problem of linguism in Indian politics. So today's webinars, in today's webinar, we are not going to enter into that uh, domain or going to, going to discuss all those things uh, in, uh, in today's webinar. But uh, we are going to talk about the importance of, you know, learning new languages in a very uh, interconnected world that uh, of our time. So we will be focusing on the 
importance of how you know one can possibly learn you know or many uh, languages as one could possibly uh, learn so our focus will be uh, on this uh, aspect that uh, how many languages of other communities can one learn apart from our own mother tongue or our own dialect or our own language uh, in general you know it is important for all of us you know especially in india in indian context to know and to learn the uh, hindi english and also some of the you know uh, languages which are recognized by the eighth schedule of the indian constitution most importantly it is a must for all of us you know to learn and to know how to speak and even you know how to speak and how to write hindi and english uh, in our own context in northeast india it is also important for all of us you know to reconsider this need you know in our in our time uh, and also help you know our younger generation to uh, focus on focus attention on learning you know our diverse uh, languages that we have even in the case of northeast india so just coming home in our state nagaland we have 16 naga tribes and uh, and uh, in other parts of the northeast also you know um, putting all the naga tribe together we have around 66 naga tribes tribes you know and we all have unique languages and you, uh, we have uh, different uh, dialects and uh, it is very important you know in the case of our state nagaland that the students you know could understand and speak you know each one of them so that you know the community language can be used you know as a tool uh, with which you know we can think and as a means by which we can communicate with others better so therefore our focus is how to you know how 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 do we encourage you know young generation young people to learn more languages so that you know they are able to communicate you know in their respective regions or with with the people with people from other parts of the regions you know through languages through you know learning their languages so the second part is speaking about you know we uh, our students webinar speakers you know uh, they will be talking about you know they will be speaking about language skills of their parents and grandparents grandparents also and then another one uh, the another aspect of today's um, uh, webinar is uh, learning new languages benefits so what are the benefits you know that one can accrue to oneself by you know embarking you know on learning other languages so i just want to uh, say that you know Today's program is all about how, you know, our younger generation, you know, especially, you know, uh, students who felt, you know, the need of knowing more languages and also as they try to learn more languages, what are the experiences that they have gone through? They have, ex what are their experiences? So we will be, you know, uh, getting to know from our present, uh, you know, speakers today. So I look forward, you know, for uh, meaningful, you know, uh, sharing of their uh, experiences. And also, I believe that uh, they will throw uh, out, you know, many text away points. And uh, we also will have a very meaningful Q&A sessions. Uh, so I am looking forward and I wish uh, each one of them the very best, you know, uh, in their uh, efforts to share what uh, they uh, would like to communicate to the people at large. So I, as a, one of the participants, I'm also looking forward uh, to listen to them. And I also heartily once again welcome every one of you, uh, some of my colleagues from other department and then the uh, I also welcome, you know, uh, our uh, respected, uh, you know, um, people, uh, you know, uh, 
sirs and madams from the management and also students, participants, my colleagues, every one of you to this webinar. Uh, and uh, I would like to uh, conclude by uh, giving my best wishes to the student speaker for this uh, program. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rimi. Uh, that was a, that was a clear and a very vivid introduction for this uh, students webinar today. Um, we look forward to engaging with the speakers uh, of the, with this particular theme and topic. Uh, I would like to uh, before we proceed with the speakers, I would like to read out briefly the, our concept note for this webinar. So. Um, uh, we have learning new language benefits, a Naga experience. India is a multilingual country and it is a land of many languages and dialect. There is a linguistic diversity in India. According to People's Linguistic Survey of India, there are 780 languages and 86 scriptures of which 250 languages got extinguished and some other languages have been considered to be endangered languages. The eight schedules of constitution of India recognizes 22 languages, excluding English, and the linguistic policies of funding the Indian government are organized around this information. After independence, the language, the language policy of central government was not appreciated by the supporters of regional languages and uh, as a reaction, the issue of language was politicized. If anti English agitations were launched in, in, in Hindi speaking areas, anti Hindi agitations were launched by non Hindi speakers, st uh, speaking states in South India. Instead of learning both the official languages, some people have shown no interest at all in learning other languages. Language is both a tool with which we think by and a means by which we communicate with others. It seems that in Nagaland, the present generation is showing keen interest in learning new languages apart from those that are recognized by the eighth schedule of the constitution. Even the Korean language is quite a popular here. As per the union government's report, Nagaland students' performance on English language is higher than the national average. They also have good skills over the Hindi language. In this backdrop, the academic world has a great necessity to understand how young generations in Naga society are so inclined to learn new languages, how they develop their interest towards new learning new languages, what are their learning new languages benefits and experiences. During this webinar session, some of the questions will be taken up the webinar also aims to educate and inculcate the importance of language as a tool and a means by which we think and communicate with others in all aspects of our life. So with this um, concept, not based on this concept, not, we look forward to uh, engaging with the speakers in a broader and a diverse manner with this particular topic. And we know that uh, the learning new languages and especially Korean languages with regard to uh, the dramas and movies and songs, K-pops, etc. is of uh, great influence and also uh, very popular among the youths in uh, uh, the Naga society. So we look forward to uh, the interesting uh, talk session with the speakers. So first of all, I would like to um, request our first speaker, First participants, uh, and then uh, the following the participants. Please take your time for uh, following the uh, keeping in mind with the numbers uh, with the follow up. I will read out the participants, and uh, you take your time accordingly. The first participants uh, participant is Keza Viko Loshe, PA first semester. Then second is Rose M Lota, PA third semester. Third speaker will be Dia Lila Imsong, first semester. Then uh, the fourth speaker will be Kalibo, Kalibo, PA first semester. Then we have Lika Zimo, PA third semester. So uh, please take your time accordingly. Keza Viko. Thank you, Ms. Ongshi. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, 
Miss Ongshi, could you please confirm if I am clearly audible? Yes, audible, clear. Thank you, Miss. Um, there was an article, I believe, uh, published in a news outlet called Mint two years ago in 2018 that stated that Nagaland is one of the most diverse states in, in the country, language-wise, with Kerala being the least diverse, with 97% of its residents identifying Malayalam as their mother tongue. Nagaland has 14 languages, 17 dialects, with Konyak, the largest, the largest language, having about a 46% share. Now, Nagaland has no shortage in diversity in languages. Most Nagas are bilingual or multilingual, meaning that they are proficient in two or more than two languages. Amongst teenagers and young adults, there has been a rise in popularity of certain languages like Korean, French, Japanese, and even Thai language. This, however, is not something that began very recently. Although it is still an arguable matter as to how this fascination for foreign languages initially began, it is widely accepted that what sparked this linguistic phenomenon could quite possibly be an influx of imports, mainly from South Asia in the 1990s or 1980s or even before that period. These included music, soap operas, movies or dramas in the form of CDs or cassettes. You could call this a um, cultural invasion of some sort, flooding markets in Nagaland with products from across the globe. Now in the late 20th century, Nagaland was witnessing an economic transformation and young adults were curious with the outside world and were looking to experience the cultures outside of their own home, their own state. This included not only Western cultures, but also cultures of progressing countries like China or South Asia, oh sorry, South Korea in Asia. The result was this demand and supply of products from other countries that grew in popularity in Naga society. This, I believe, has become more significant in recent decades with the internet and this vast intermingling of people globally there exists this fascination for cultures in such, um, as Dr. Rime mentioned, such an interconnected world. This, I believe, is self-evident in what we see today with young people being influenced by things like anime, K-pop, and among other things. For me personally, um, I'm not personally acquainted with many languages, but the languages that I do know are Hindi, English, the local dialect of Nagamese, and a little bit of Japanese and French on the sidelines. And of course, my, mo my mother tongue, Tenyude. And even within Tenyude, there are so many variations of the language. Like for instance, in, in Pesama, which is my father's village, the type or variation of Tenyude there is somewhat different from the Tenyede that exists in Konoma. And the type of Tenyede that exists in Konoma is different from um, other villages, ang other Angami villages, like in Chechama or Kohima. As far as language is concerned, youngsters are increasingly developing capacities for new languages. In many ways, I think this can be used effectively to benefit ourselves. Now, there are multiple advantages to learning new languages. Some health benefits concerns include um, sharpening thinking abilities, critical thinking and listening abilities. People who speak more than one language have proved to have better memory and enhanced multitasking cap capacities. And also keeping in mind, uh, learning new languages and having a an array of different languages at your, at your set keeps the mind healthy and sharp even through old age. It also gives the mind a form of plasticity, meaning the quality of being easily shaped or molded. 
And it also gives more rational so decision making. Now, as far as social benefits are concerned, it allows people to communicate efficiently with ease. And being able to speak other languages exposes us to different cultures and helps foster appreciation for the traditions, arts, or history of the people associated with that particular language. And not to mention greater vocabulary in the first language and essentially being able to speak the same ideas in different languages. This allows one to find and create different dimensions of the same ideas or concepts, aiding in learning the subject matter in finer, more comprehensive detail. It also boosts confidence, and being proficient in more than one language is beneficial in an age when globally we are, as again, Dr. Rimei mentioned, globally interconnected. Now, multilingual people also have employment benefits with better job prospects and employers and companies giving greater attention to those who are skilled at more than one language. That being said, it is important to note that in our attempts to develop our skills for other languages, there is always the possibility that we might lose our own original language or fall short in owning our own culture. There are certain benefits to having an edge by knowing multiple languages. But as they say, learn as many languages as you can, but never forget your own. Thank you. Rose M. Lota, PA third semester. Can you take your time? Rose M. Lota. I think, I think, uh, I think Rose M. Lota have some issue with the technical issue. So let's proceed with Dia Lila, Dia Lila Imsong, BA first semester. Dia Lila. Yes, Miss. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Am I audible? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you for having me today. My name is Thierry Limesong from BA First Semester, and I'm going to speak about the experiences of Naga, uh, Nagas on learning new languages. Um, there are numerous languages spoken around the world. Language is a form of communication that assists people to communicate with one another from every part of the world. They are bilingual and multilingual around the globe, and Nagas are no exception to that. Naglin is the clear winner on the diversity stakes on both the language and dialect axis. In my case, uh, I can speak Hindi, English, Ao, and Naganese, and can understand some basic Korean words, which I learned through watching Korean series. It is no surprise that I know Ao Naga, as it was my first language that I learned through my parents, and I'm pretty sure the first ever word I said might have been in Ao. Secondly, almost all schools in Nagaland are English medium and thus I believe most students from Nagaland can speak or understand English. As for Hindi, it was a compulsory subject in my previous school and watching a lot of cartoons when I was small really helped in learning it. Lastly, I may not be able to write in Hangul, which is the alphabetical system in Korea, yet I can probably say that I can at least watch some clips of Korean series without the subtitles. Uh, the main reason why I became so interested about this language is their culture. 
and watching Korean series really helped me in getting an idea about the Korean culture. The Naga community has always been keen on learning new things and experimental. Uh, there, learning new languages is no exception. Languages are an important essence attached to each respective cultures. The younger generation of Nagas, let's, let's take the example of uh, the Generation Z, has always been keen on learning new languages and study about other cultures. For the most part, the young generation of Nagas are able to speak two or more additional languages, that is their mother tongue, the national language of India, which is Hindi and English. The curiosity to learning never ends. Discovering something and wanting to adapt and manifest that particular thing into their lives is something which I have personally observed in the younger generation of Nagas, especially with the rapid spread and rise of Korean culture in our land. Uh, the interest and curiosity to learn their language and culture has escalated. Half of the younger generation can understand and hold basic conversation. Um, sorry. Half of the younger generation can understand and hold basic conversation in Korean. There's also Japanese, which comes from their interest in anime. And then there's English, which I believe most all, almost all the younger generation can speak and understand. English is also the common language spoken around the world, including India. Nagas are exceptionally well-versed when it comes to English language. The performance of Naga students in English is higher than the national average. In most cases, many Nagas go abroad to go get their education or to settle in, which also plays a big role in shaping their linguistic skills and abilities, provided with the fact that their interest in other cultures increases their knowledge in the fields of politics as well. Learning a new language eventually leads to learning about their cultures, which is never a dull experience. With the advancement of the world, the minds of the younger generation is also advanced. The road to learning new things is and being experimental is never ending. Lastly, in order to prepare our nation's children uh, or the future leaders of the next generations, uh, sorry, in order to prepare our nation's children to be the next generation's future entrepreneurs, doctors, scientists, engineers, or whatever influential job they choose, we must foster an environment from a young age that promotes multilingual learning. Through this, we are setting up ourselves, uh, the, next the leaders of the next generation, for growth, success, security, and ultimately prosperity. Thank you. Thank you, dear Lila Imsong. Uh, now I request uh, uh, Rose and Lothar to kindly take your time. Uh, wishing everyone a very warm and love-filled afternoon present here in this webinar. So before I start speaking, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Rose M. Lothar. Uh, I from both science department, BA third semester. As we all know that Nagaland is known for its great diversity and also great known for its flora and fauna too. Nagaland is a tribal state where in total there is 16 main tribes, so each individual has their own languages. So my mother tongue is Lota, Lota dialect, and there is no other mixture as my parents we bought Lota and has for all my ancestors were Lota too. Lota is my first language that I've learned and being taught. Besides Lota language, I get to know some other languages too. That is Nagamese, English, Hindi, Korean, Japanese, and some few tribal languages. As I was born and brought up from Dimapu, it was very vital for me to know Nagamese. And as far as I remember, my second language that I've learned was Nagamese at the age of four to five years old. Nagamese is no language of Assam, in a Creole language, of Assamese language, and it is playing a vital role in our society, be it in rural or urban areas. Nagamis represent the best communication medium for all the Nagas in Nagaland, especially at grassroots level. I feel that I learned Nagamis because of my curiosity, because whenever I go out with my parents in terms of function or in marketplace, they exchange words in Nagamis to local people. So therefore, I was able to cope up with Nagami's language. I have friends 
and in my friend circle, each and everyone belonged to different tribes. So automatically, I was influenced to speak their languages too. So I can speak some few words in Sumi and Changdu. Uh, many of the Nagas, including me, we tend to learn their best friends. Uh, languages in order to communicate them and it felt more closer to them and we also find it cool and great to do that. Moving on to English language, as we know that in 1967, Nagaland used English as the official language, so I went to English medium school, so I learned English. At first, the English was very simple more sophisticated, but as I grew older and older, the language seems to get more complicated and fast. And we go to learn English, and I believe that whenever we watch movies, we learn new words and songs and things very cool. So I learned Hindi during my youth. It was compulsory for Nagaland State to learn Hindi, but not. But only a few period of time in my school, I was taught Hindi till my eighth standard, and after that, it was depend upon me whether I should continue taking up my subject. I'm not really that fluent in Hindi, but I understand it completely because of my parents. In my childhood, times, the parents watch news, Bollywood movies, and TV serials. So basically, from here, I understand and know in Hindi, and I believe that almost all the Naga people do this. Am I ever getting out of the is influenced by other language, culture, and lifestyle. So, most of the Naka is greatly influenced by Korean culture, and so am I. So, like, we Naka belong to the Mongolian race, so the appearance is slightly similar to some Asian countries like China, Japan, and Korea. We have small chinky eyes, so people usually often call us to that term. So, according to me, it's because of the people who call us in that manner, let us choose about it and know who are they. So, I've learned Korean language through K pop and K drama. So, like, whenever I watch the music video, or dramas, it really amazed me a lot because the Korean people look so perfect. They have a perfect body, perfect skin, and everything. So I was really impressed by them. So I tend to look like them. And also, mainly speaking, the language looks very warm to me. Most commonly used by Naga people. And many more. It's like, we can't meet them. I'm like, Neither can I see me like so I try to speak their language in order to feel more and I dream every day that maybe once I can go and visit South Korea and meet all people. So last but not least, I'm really interested in learning Japanese language and it was only possible because I start watching anime. If you guys are confused, what is an anime then let me explain. Uh an anime is a hand-drawn and computer animation originating from Japan. I'm easily attracted because by watching it, I find it very unreal and superficial and uncanny too. And the main reason is because of the character they display. They're not real, but the character looks so real and very amazing that sometimes I try to look like them by cosplaying it. As we know that in Nagaland, Kohima, every year on the month of July, the host and even NAJ goes cost fees, it's pay to tribute to those fans out there. People cosplay some anime characters and compete who looks the best. So sometimes I go there and watch their cosplay and it makes me so hyper that I start learning the language. And it's like a similar feeling towards the Korean culture and language. So theoretically speaking, that you guys might be wondering that what's the use or benefit in learning all these other languages. So I believe that I'm earning a great benefit by adapting other languages because it boosts my brain power by developing my learning skills such as cognitive thinking and problem solving. It's like I'm doing a brain gym. Basically, I'm a multilingual person then. So I believe that multilinguals are more confident in everything they do, be it in decision making or doing multitasks. And it feels like it improves my other academic areas and it increases my networking skills. It would also have the advantage of seeing the world for different viewpoints and chancing my ability to communicate in today's globally connected world. Thank you, everyone.
thank you, Rose. Now, uh, next, we have Kalibo, BA first semester, and then uh, Liga Zemo, BA third semester. Please follow, uh, please take your time after Kalibo. Thank you. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Kalibo from BA first semester, and currently taking up pole science as my honors paper. Uh, well, Frank. Frank Smith says that one language saves you in a corridor for life. Two languages open, open every door along, along the way. Likewise, everyone has different talents and being multilingual is also one of the challenge, I would say. As on my part, I learned few languages since from my childhood. I have, I have learned four languages so far, that is Sumi, English, Hindi, and our language. I was I was taught how to sp how to speak Sumi language since childhood as I am from the Sumi community. As for my second language, that is English language, since I was brought up from English medium school, I learned from my school, and also English is our state language. So this is how I learned to I learned how to speak English. The first thing I learned in English language was how to say some polite words like thanking you, sorry, welcome, please, etc. And for my third language was was Hindi as well as, as, as we all know, Hindi is a national language of India. And also it is not that easy language to learn according to me. When people speak certain words in Hindi, it sounds easy for the person who listen. But when we try to speak, it is not that easy as it sounds. I should say, I should say it needs lots of practice. Hindi is a very sweet language and being a part of India, we should all know how to speak Hindi. Whereas for our, my fourth language, I learned from my neighbors as I was staying in, in the our community. It was, not, it was not hard for me to learn our language. And well, about my parents and grandparents, they were not that educated person like other people but i can proudly say that my dad can speak multilingual languages from from what uh, he learned during his childhood and about my grand grandparents well my grandfather he can hardly speak rangma rangma sumi and hindi languages he learned hindi language when when he was a soldier, soldier during the second Second World War, and still now he can speak so well, so well. As I have shared my experience with you all, I'm sure that many of you have the same experience in learning new languages. So let us not stop, but continue to explore more languages as it as it helps us to communicate and understand one another in depth. Thank you. Mm, good evening, everyone, respected lecturers, and all my dear friends. Firstly, I want to thank Sir Sabra Ali for giving me this privilege, and I hope you will all be able to lend, me, lend your ears for some minutes. Today, I'll be speaking about the zealness in the Naga society in learning new cultures and languages, and how it has built a bridge between people in the course, giving opportunities to all aspects of life. Firstly, growing up in the state of Nagaland has been a very big blessing to me since there hasn't been any restriction on me or on any Nagas as a whole against learning anything new. There has also been a fascination on the part of younger Nagas for learning new cultures and new languages. Also, a major part of us being able to read and speak these different languages can be partly given to our parents as there hasn't been any restriction on watching only a specific language best program for us. Our parents have been kind and generous enough to us by not objecting to learning anything new or new cultures or languages. So we, the younger generation of Nagas, have been quite fortunate enough to be able to learn and study all these other cultures. As for me, I too have been very fortunate enough to have parents that has never objected me in learning new language and new cultures. Secondly, the first time I got introduced to a different culture was the North Indian culture as I grew up watching Bollywood movies and serials. 
A major part of how I learned and understood Hindi can be contributed by the Hindi movies, which I used to watch during my younger days. And although Hindi was taught to us in school, starting from class six, it was made easier by the fact that we have already been introduced to it through movies and songs. And later as I grew up, Hollywood movies started to train more and I started watching, I started watching it and I learned lots about Americans and their cultures. Um, watching English movies and literature has, re has been a very helpful source from which I have been able to improve on my speaking and writing skills of the English language. And taking a dictionary and looking up on a new English vocabulary while reading books or movies has really helped me along the way. In addition to this, Korean dramas and movies have also been a very major part of my life as I grew older. Although I haven't been able to learn so much about Korean language, yet I have been able to study the cultures through their dramas and movies. Learning about all these different cultures and languages has been a very blessing to me. If you are fluent in it, you have a higher chance of getting jobs and other opportunities because these days most of the companies and others search for people with good communication skills in English. Also another point is being able to connect with people by communicating in their own languages and thus this allows us to get closer and helps us understand their culture more deeply and expose us to their traditions, religion, arts, etc. And while traveling and being able to speak the local language or culture can help us a lot and also in gaining perspective about religion. Um, lastly, one of the easiest way of learning different culture and language of the world can be done by watching your movies and books of a particular region as we are easily immersed in it through their stories. In conclusion, we in August as a whole should not only take more interest in our own tradition, culture, and mother tongues, but rather take it to another level and use it for the professional and personal benefit. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you, all, everyone. Uh, that was a very uh, interesting deliberations on the engagement, uh, deliberations and engagement with learning new languages and uh, experiences, your experiences, and uh, in a, a very diverse and broad manner, we have deliberated together with the speakers. So now I would like to uh, request uh, Dr. Sabur Ali to lead the session for Q&A and I hope we will have a more uh, engaging and uh, more engaging and also uh, more fruitful uh, discussions uh, and more detailed discussions on this particular topic with the speakers. So uh, I now place uh, this time uh, to Dr. Sabur Ali. Dr. Sabur Ali. Thank you, Ero. Uh, now the question answer session starts. Now the audience can ask the question with our speakers. Our yeah, now now the audience can speak our question, can ask their questions with our speakers. Uh, please use the chat box first, and then I will call your name. Then you can raise your question. Please use the chat box first, and then I will um, I will call you for the, your question. Yeah, one clarification. Uh, Hindi is not India's national language. It is a uh, official language. Uh, English is associate official language. Uh, Vijaya, if you have any question, please uh, take the mic. 
डॉक्टर विजय uh yes uh, actually i am giving clarification uh, there was a proposal in the beginning for making hindi a national language uh, but due to the uh, anti uh, hindi agitations from the especially from the south southern part of india uh, this was uh, pushed back and now again it is uh, uh, you know uh, brought on on to the front line uh, politics so that's what i am giving clarification apart from that uh, the presentations were enriching in a way that how uh, language uh, will help us learning new language will help us to know uh, culture uh, of uh, different uh, regions different uh, ethnicities and also different countries that's all thank you it's a very good uh, session now you can take the mic hero please take the mic i think there is one more question by pamrisham jagol uh, i think you can initiate the discussion what is the origin and official language of nagaland i think there are uh, a few questions coming up so uh, dr sabur ali please uh, initiate the discussion and uh, uh, discussion and follow with the q and a yeah yeah i will do mr uh, you take your uh, the english department man my name is nira nisa is you ask the question my question is to the participant what they prefer expelling one language to be proficient in that or having knowledge of many in language but not making any significant contribution to any one question kesa um yes sir sure yeah please take the question um thank you miss nisha dahia um although i don't think i would take um the answer to both extremes as to excelling in only one language and being proficient in specifically that language or having knowledge of many languages and not making significant contribution to any even one because um in a way that's sort of a very polarizing question i think because i think um in many ways i could go right down the middle if you ask me because having multiple languages um at your disposal is in a way very useful in present day society because again like i mentioned earlier with the health mental and uh, social advantages of being multilingual but i think i see your point here um maybe in the context to nationality or nationalism or s- strictly belonging to one particular group or society i think it is important that we remember our own mother tongue and uh, having this one particular uniform language that can be shared by all i think that is important too and that reflects well in to our own culture and to our own society but to a certain extent i believe and um to answer your question well and i can't specific- question uh, okay sir this is our hachodi question also address address our hachodi question um before i go to dr ramesh question uh miss nisha dahia um my answer to your question is that i don't have an answer to your question 
or well, more specifically, I think there are other ways that we can use language, not just one language, but multiple languages. And when we speak of multiple languages, I think um, about two or three languages, being proficient in those and uh, learning how to communicate efficiently in just a few languages, I think could be more advantageous as well than having so many languages and not being able to communicate properly in all of them. As for Dr. Rime's question, what is the role of accent in the process of learning new languages? A very good question, sir. Uh, thank you for asking. Um, here, I think I'd like to uh, bring to your attention this um, certain shaming for the accents of Nagas, specifically by our own people. And this is new trend in the youngsters um, that you can see in WhatsApp statuses or on social media where they criticize uh, other people for having this, this native English accent. And although I believe that accent should not have a, such an important role in um, learning a language or speaking a language, I do admit that um, to some extent, in some dimensions of society, uh, having an accent does have some of its disadvantages, I do agree. Um, but uh, nevertheless, um, regardless of your accent, if you do have proper vocabulary, if you are efficient in communicating and knowing how to communicate, and more importantly, the more you have, uh, the more firm grasp you have on the language itself. Uh, I, don't, I think if you have that, then accent is not on the higher list, uh, the higher part of your list of priorities. But yes, um, I do agree. Uh, having a different accent can, can give you a disadvantage in some aspects, yes. Any more questions? Thank you, Kesa. Now, Erofi, madam. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, before we uh, conclude with the webinar, sir, I had a question for you, Dr. Sabur. Yeah, if you, um, if you will, could you please um, explain a little more on this anti-Hindu protests in India? Because I think the students and I are very intrigued with this topic and we'd like to know more from you. Yeah, um, in the in the very beginning, uh, in uh, so I'm I'm trying to give answer. Uh, in the very beginning, uh, like um, Hindu nationalism, Hindu based ideology, they had the strong power in the national politics. So they try to make Hindi as a national language. It means national language. It uh, the, there is a difference between national language and official language. The national language will represent the culture. It has sentimental attachment with the people. The official language, it is just they are using for the instrumental purpose. According to sociolinguistics, uh, uh, sociolinguistic scholars, they are giving such a definitions. So uh, in the very beginning, Hindu nationalism, idea of Hindu, it tried to capture the national politics and they want to make Hindi as a national language. In this backdrop, and they made Hindi as a compulsory language uh, in all over India, in schools, education, syllabus. But South Indian people, particularly uh, from uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, they started to oppose this idea. So uh, according to them, they told like if Hindi becomes a national language and it becomes a superior official language, uh, the benefit of the state entirely will go to the North Indian people and the South Indian people uh, non-Hindi people uh, uh, will reach the second citizen position. So uh, that's, this is the debate between South and North. Uh, uh, from South India regarding this, they started the protest. Uh, the protest continues, still it continues. Even, uh, even now the current regime also try to make a three language formula. Uh, they are trying to bring, uh, they are trying to impose Hindi language on uh, Tamil Nadu. But still, in Tamil Nadu people in the political gallery, they are opposing this idea. Okay, so the Hindi, like basically, like a, it is uh, like a, 
uh, it has close connection with the idea of a first class citizen and second class citizen okay so ba based on this matter of this struggle is going on yeah i hope uh, i i gave you a short introduction about uh, the hindi education program Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, now Yerofi can take uh, mic. Thank you, Dr. Sabur. Uh, our Q&A session was um, enriching and it was, uh, uh, we have, it also have provided scope for us to question and uh, also question ourselves and also engage and deliberate together with these various aspects of uh, various aspects and ideas on learning new languages and also engaging on the language politics so um, it has opened a scope for us to all, uh, also uh, delve towards this particular topic for uh, for whoever is interested, more interested in this uh, particular field. So um, that was a wonderful session and that was very enriching. Thank you, Dr. Sabur and all the speakers. Uh, now uh, let us um, go towards the, uh, towards the um, concluding remarks. Uh, let us, uh, we will have a concluding remark by uh, Dr. Anirudha Babur, Assistant Professor. That's a college, both sides department. So, uh, Dr. Anu. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. First of all, I really congratulate uh, the coordinator for coming up with this uh, <clears throat> wonderful idea uh, and the topic learning new languages benefits Naga experience. Now, when we think about uh, the Naga experience, the one thing that we have to understand, what is the meaning of being a Naga? This is a very primary question because uh, the reference point of uh, the entire uh, event is Nagas, right? So when we try to explore this uh, complex question of what is the meaning of being Naga, then we come to realize that uh, it is very uh, sleepy understanding that we have about the word Naga, right? Because we have uh, 16 tribes in Nagaland, and uh, if we uh, include the other tribes of the Nagas who are scattered in different uh, Naga regions located in uh, different uh, parts of uh, other states like, say, Manipur, or Arunachal Pradesh, and Assam, it would be more than 60, 60 tribes, right? And if you, if you really want to go deeper and if you go to Myanmar, right, in the Kachin region areas and all, you will find that, uh, you know, there are, there are Naga tribes who are living there and they have developed their own uh, uh, linguistic channels and uh, the language. So first we have to speak about what is the meaning of uh, being Naga and later on, you know, we need to understand you know, how the uh, linguistic experiences or language experiences have been perceived, right? Now, you see, uh, we have uh, Nagamis here in Nagaland. And uh, official language of uh, Nagaland, the administrative language of Nagaland is English. The question is, why do we have English? And for that, we have to go back two centuries. And then we find our answers, you know, with the coming of... Uh, uh, Christian missionaries' introduction of English uh, as a formal language uh, of uh, education, right? So it is very important to observe that that English was the first alien language which was penetrated uh, in the Nagaland in its purest form, right? So that is the answer. Now, when we think about uh, the overall uh, perspective. Basically, language is a system of uh, communication in speech and writing, which has been used by people of a particular region. And uh, that is something that sets uh, people apart from all other creatures. Every known human society 
as you know has a language and though some non humans may be able to communicate with one another in fairly complex ways no one of their communication system begins to approach language in its uh, ability to convey information nor i believe is the transmission of complex and varied information such as is an uh, integral part of the everyday lives of the other creatures nor do other communication system share many of their design features of human language such as the ability to communicate about events other than in here and now but it is difficult to conceive of human society without language so when we uh, discuss about the language we cannot uh, separate it from sociological perspective we cannot separate it from political angle also so so we have to understand one thing that language like culture uh, that other most human attribute is notable for its unity in diversity of course there are many languages and many cultures all different but all fundamentally the same in one way or the other way because there is one human nature and because the fundamental property of this human nature is the way in which it allows such diversity in both language as well as culture uh i have been uh, i have been uh, studying and coming to nagaland for more than a decade now so it's almost a journey of 10 years 11 years for me so when i uh, discuss and think about uh, our fascination our passion for the korean language you know i i i really uh, you know get thoughts churn up in my mind now you see uh, hallyu or korean wave is is a phenomenon of korean entertainment and popular culture which includes pop music dramas and movies but relatively this uh, hallyu culture is relatively more prominent in the northeast india okay including nagaland now you see uh, when we think about uh, the ethnic groups our northeast india have more than 220 ethnic groups each with its unique cultural transition and language the people of the northeast uh, i believe feel more connected with the southeast asian culture than that of the heartland of india and it is absolutely fact this connection could be due to range of factors like physical resemblance traditional knowledge systems and uh, food habits as well and yes there are numerous korean restaurants uh, in all over northeast india and i all, always uh, tell my students about korean uncles cafe <laughs> nearby our college you know these are these are small examples actually okay to to Uh, actually understand this uh, entire grand phenomena okay but somewhere i believe uh, that the appeal of uh, k pop of uh, or k entertainment lies with the concept of fresh colorful youthfulness with a certain amount of innocence that we normally do not see in other music industries anymore despite the huge uh, usual cynicism the fact remains that it connects with the youth in a huge way so this is the reality of the today's uh, not only nagaland but the entire northeast india so the journey from mother tongue to the to, to the korean language to the japanese language to french language has been has been very long and it will continue like suppose in in my case specifically i am i'm 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 also interested in the modern languages as well as in the ancient language do you know once upon a time i mean 2000 or 3000 years ago in india uh, there was one language which was called pali language have you heard about it the way we speak hindi now the way we speak nangam is in nagaland okay or marathi in maharashtra the pali used to be spoken in entire magad empire almost uh, 70 to 80% of the people of the uh, of the uh, you know the people living in the magad empire used to speak pali language now where is that pali language it's gone now right where is um, uh, where is makdi language it's gone now so these are the languages you know which came prospered and disappeared from the slate of the history but of course we still study them in the universities what about the latin and sanskrit well there is one similarity between latin and sanskrit is that 
that sanskrit and latin both were the language of the class which was devoted to the study so it, uh, those were the these were the languages or intellectual languages i should say so where is the latin now we do not know what is the use of latin we do not know we we are not even able to you know find people who can teach us latin i tried but i failed right so what is the conclusion the conclusion of our discussion and conclusion of whatever i'm trying to convey is very simple that we are floating in the time we are moving ahead the languages will come languages will grow languages will come languages will go mankind will prosper and we will reach somewhere from point a to point b so i am not really surprised or rather i have any problem with what language is coming and what language is going off like for example in mumbai you know uh, in mumbai we do not speak hindi right there is a mixture kind of language even in mumbai there is no pure marathi the, the kind of marathi that you get to hear in mumbai and the marathi that you get to hear in pune is totally different or the marathi that you get to hear in other parts of maharashtra is totally different how many of us speak pure language i don't know because being a student of history i i, I know very well that with the progress of human civilization in order to create something we have to give up something but what i'm worried about is the cost of it that's it thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to uh, share my views uh thanks to the organizers and uh, wonderful job uh, done by participants as well thank you so much thank you everyone uh, with this we have come to the end of our session i hope you had a wonderful time and uh, also a very uh, you you get a very insightful ideas about this uh, uh, regarding the language learning languages and also the benefits and experiences in a very diverse and a broad aspects of uh, aspects and it also might have uh, open up the scope to uh, endeavor uh, further on with uh, research or do further engagement so thank you everyone it was a wonderful uh, evening and it was a wonderful session with all the participants and speakers uh, speakers so uh, with this we uh, we have come to the end of our of our session uh, you have a wonderful evening ahead thank you everyone